since Andy Lyle's victory at the 1988 World Match Play Championship capped a fine year of golf for the Scot and banished a few demons too. The win was long overdue as he'd lost previous World Match Play finals to Seve Ballesteros and Woosnam and twice to Greg Norman. But 88 was Sandy's year as he saw off Nick Faldo for the title and remembers what it felt like to win after so many near misses. I mean, any time you just achieve the final of the match play is a, a big achievement because you've got to go through a lot of good names in golf, you know, strong names, like Raymond Floyd, or it could be Hale Irwin, or Gary Player would be still playing in those days. Um, Ernie Els and these sort of boys came along a little later before I, I was, was out of it by then. And uh, well, they were still great names in golf, so it was an endurance test. And uh, when you do finish the the get to the last uh, week it's it's trying to keep your strength up because you're mentally you're, you're battered and bruised and I mean you, you don't always get easy matches and my most memorable match would would be against Faldo um, who we were always challenged against as far as the press and uh, he managed to make an eagle putt on the last hole of the first round when I was sitting about five feet away for a, an eagle and he holds his and I miss mine, so I went six down. So it really just seemed, well, can I get past the ninth hole? It would be quite an achievement because, you know, I'm six down against you know, one of the best players in Europe at the time, not looking good. And the first hole, I had to hold about an eight-footer for a par to save myself going seven down. And to cut a long story short, he holed a bunker shot on the 16th hole uh, to keep the, the game going, otherwise he would have got beat three and two. So that just shows you how it can turn around in match play. You never give up. And momentum went my way, I made the putts. I didn't shoot lights out, I didn't shoot like a 61 and I was just making the birdies at the right time. And momentum was going my way. And uh, I don't suppose he'll want to talk about it very much, but at the time it was uh, a very rewarding moment uh, in match play, you just never know. You got thousands of people watching, so you want to try and perform at a good level. And unfortunately, you know, I had four or five attempts before I ended up winning it myself. Uh, I've got the salvos in my trophy room to prove that I was in five uh, in five finals and uh, managed to win it. Yeah. I was always more of a stroke player, conservative, but match play you need to be a little bit more open and, and go for shots and and stay on top of your opponent. And uh, the world match play get into that was, was a premier tournament in those days. You only had a field of about 12 playing at that time. Plus there was buys, so I usually end up having to play from the day one onwards and two rounds a day, um, morning and afternoon. So it wasn't just over 18 holes of wonder, it was over 36 holes. So even though you might have a convincing lead, you still got to maintain that even in the afternoon as well. It's a long week. You've had uh, five rounds, ten. You've had something like ten rounds of golf. Uh, time you got to the final. And Wentworth isn't one of the lightest of golf courses to, to walk around. It's a seven thousand plus course, a lot of walking, and uh, yeah, you're, you're pretty whacked by time. It's, it's hard to get into a into a happy mode. You're more like happy you've finished and won, but it's not easy. To, you've got to get yourself going again because you know. You'll be teeing up next week in another tournament.